film, you are playing a character and he's, he's pretending to be someone that he's not. And he sort of has to play that convincingly because otherwise if he doesn't, then his cover will be blown. Which is similar to what an actor has to do. You have to play it convincingly so the audience will be convinced. What's the most pressure that you felt to get a role right? I guess with David, it's not so much that he's pretending to be someone else. It's just that he doesn't give away all of his information. He's been extremely well trained. So he enters into a situation. He's able to execute his chosen missions incredibly efficiently. Uh, without, you know, revealing any of the details to anybody because the only person concerned is himself. And I guess in hindsight that looks like he's hiding something. But, um, but actually the great sort of delight of this character was just all the information that David is, ho is holding that he doesn't need to, to share uh, with the family. All he needs to do is, is make them feel at ease and at home and, uh, you know, to walk into that family and uh, charm them in order to get his job done, you know. And in this film, Michael Monroe's character, she has a penchant for mixtapes, and which one of which she gives to David. Yeah. If someone was going to make a mixtape for Dan Stevens, yes. what would need to be on that mixtape? Ooh, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, what would I choose? God. Uh, some Daft Punk, maybe. Chemical Brothers. Aphex mm -hmm. Twin. You, uh, you can stop me at some point. Um, <laughs> no, I Nick Drake. Um, I'll keep going. Um, yeah, taste, no, right? cool. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a great mystery surrounding your character you were alluding to earlier in terms of he's keeping all the details to himself. If the sort of the script came to you and the reveal wasn't satisfying, would you still have taken on the role? For, for this film? Yeah. yeah, I probably would have responded differently. But I, I have to say, I mean, almost from, you know, page three of reading this script, I was laughing out loud. Um, I found it very, very funny, and it, it really sort of had me from, from the beginning. Um, but, uh, but it's really the, it's not so much a reveal as a kind of dip in this kind of roller coaster where you suddenly are thrown into a very, very different kind of movie experience. And it's very similar to Adam and Simon's previous film, You're Next, where you sit there and you, and you think initially you're watching a kind of family drama maybe for a few minutes, then it turns very, very strange, and it just gets stranger and stranger and stranger, and, and you're sort of thrown into a, a very crazy world, excuse me, and, um, you know, it, you're, you're thrown into that world, and you just go along with it, and you, you really enjoy the ride, and uh, I think the guest does something kind of similar. And now you're someone who's done TV, film, and theatre. What is the most challenging for you? I think they all have their own challenges, you know, and I really like uh, all of them in their own way. I love the live experience of theatre. Um, I really enjoyed, uh, you know, three years on, on Downton, that sort of long-running format. Um, but it is a different kind of experience to the intense burst that you get with feature film. And you, and you know the whole story. It's not that you're waiting for the end of the series to find out what's going to happen to your character or to all the, ac the characters around you. You go into a feature knowing, knowing this world, knowing the story, and, and working out the best way to construct this, you know, from the ground up. And um, I like the collaborative experience, you know, particularly working with Adam and Simon on this. Uh, it was, it was a real blast. Yeah. And the family who take David in, they, they sort of think they know him, but he's keeping things from him. They don't know all of him. Now that you've been in this business for a while, what's something that you thought you knew about the business, but actually it's not, it's not as cool as you think? <laughs> um, I suppose this side of it is, a, is well, uh, something you don't, uh, don't think about a lot. But, um, you know, and it's but this a, a is going well, right? after after the event. This is going great. Uh, Just checking. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, you, you finish a finish a project. You know, we we finished this last summer. Um, sometimes films take longer to come out, and uh, it's funny. You know, having a bit of distance and a bit of time to to think about these things is quite nice, actually. Mm. And now that you're becoming more and more known, how are you going about picking your roles? I know you got a Walk Among the Tombstones as well, which is another thriller. How are you going about picking your roles? Is it more sort of genre or director? Or? It's, it can be led by any number of things, really. Um, very often it's a, a feeling you get from a, from a script that you read, but it could be people you're excited to work with. Um, I've worked with a real range of people this year and uh, started doing a bit more comedy again, which is fun. Um, there's a little bit of comedy in The Guest, um, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's an out-and-out -out broad comedy, but then, you know, we've got Night at the Museum coming up with Sir Lancelot, which is very big and loud and silly, um, and, uh, and a few other things uh, besides. So, yeah, I'm just, you know, exploring a bit of range at the moment. I could personally see you playing James Bond in a few years, so <laughs> if that opportunity were to present itself... If that opportunity were to present itself, we'll, we'll talk about it then. But uh, yeah, for now, uh, I'm very happy with, with David as my own little 
little bond. <laughs> cool. I don't see a time to that efficient. So. Thanks very much. Yeah.